Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. We're gonna actually split it up into part one and part two. Uh, we did a previous episode called How to Win Friends and Influence People. This one is kind of a spin-off off of that, is how to lose friends and infuriate people. I hope you like both of these episodes. As always, make sure you share the content. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome everybody to the Five Weight Podcast. I'm your host today. My name is Devin. I'm one of the pastors here at Connect. With me, some of my best friends in the world. I got Whitney Cook to my left. Whit, say what's up to the people. What's up, people? Tell them uh, what you do, who you are, if anybody hasn't watched the podcast yet. I love it, yeah. Uh, I'm Whitney. I'm our student ministries director here, and I am your female. Just keeping the boys in line She's today. my pastor. I am so, your female. That's I interesting. Am, I am officially Mike Turpak's pastor. She's my pastor. So though. if he gives pastoral. you any trouble, you just pastoral. But is she my pastor, though? Because yeah. I think... What that means is I can bring as much condemnation as needed. So if you need some help there. Mm. Yeah, because okay, that's the role of a pastor. <laughs> that is <laughs> I not true. I condemn you in my head. <laughs> tape. We need to edit a little that bit. That was of a joke some theology. for the record. I'm kidding. Yeah. Uh, to her left is Michael, Michael Francis. Francis. Michael Turbeck. Mike, you actually have a Turbeck. lot going on in your life. Two oh. major changes. Number one, you're still single. <laughs> That's a that's a consistency in Where does this how does it even go there? I don't know. Whitney's theology on condemnation just came out of me. Sorry about that. Now I have both of my pastors oh, condemning no. me. That's so, great. Uh, yeah, Mike is chronically single. Anyways, uh he is just got back. into yeah. his new house. I did. Mm-hmm. So you just bought a house? Yeah. Just Tell did, us about that. Just I, I know your digital toaster that you've been highlighting on your so here's Instagram the thing. broke here, already, bro. Here's the thing about the digital toaster. It burns I w- your I will English muffins. I will officially say that I was wrong. I'm going gonna, I'm wow. gonna to take a humble approach wow. <laughs> on the digital toaster. I was literally putting in an English muffin the other night mm-hmm. and nothing, it just wouldn't warm up. So I'm like, okay, maybe this thing is just not like in the right way. The thing literally... After three days, bro, it won't turn on. <laughs> so, yes, I made a mistake. But I got the floors done, got the paint done, mm-hmm. moved it into a new house. And beautiful. I think the real exciting thing is you actually transitioned into CY. And so you're going to be leading at uh, CY Connect Youth, yep. our youth ministry. So middle school, high school. Pumps. How's that transition, man? Oh, it's been awesome. It's been fun. I have a new pastor. You know what I mean? But no, it's been... She's tough, so... <laughs> it's been cool to see... I don't know. I grew up in a very similar situation that a lot of the kids did. Like a lot of the kids went to Marlboro High and I don't know, there's like a passion that I have now for ministry in a different way, just knowing that I was there, I didn't know Jesus and I can help influence those kids at that mm-hmm. age. It's been cool. It's been dope. That's awesome, bro. That's great. And then to his left, we have Justin Davis, Dr. Davis. Uh, Justin is mm-hmm. doing an incredible job. He's serving all over the place in our church. Yeah. Justin and I actually lead the Tri-County Campus together. Shout out TC. We launched that TC? at this time of the recording four weeks ago. At the time this comes out, I'm not sure how long, but I just know we've had an absolute blast. It's we've been, been doing ministry so together for much fun. How long have you been in Connect now? Uh, like fully committed two and a half years. It's only been that. Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Twenty November of twenty nineteen. That is incredible. Um, honestly, the three people to my left have incredible influence at our church. I would argue that they are some of the most influential people at our church, and that's a little what we want to talk about today in the podcast. Um, leadership is a massive value at our church. Um, it's something we we believe in. You'll hear me say this all the time. Our goal is not to build up a big church. Our goal is to build up big people. Mm-hmm. That's good. And so we invest in people like nobody's business. I'm very proud of our church community for that. Our programs, our systems is all tailored towards developing people. These are three incredible people developers. Um, you'll see to my left, uh, these people are not just hard workers, but they're smart workers. Um, I remember hearing a quote. They say, workers can give you eight hours. Leaders can give you 80 hours because mm. they'll employ mm. eight That's workers. Good. And honestly, these are people that they'll raise up other people underneath them. Mm-hmm. We all have the mentality of, you know, if you got hit by a bus, you'd have successors. We raise up other people underneath us. I know it's kind of a dark principle, but <laughs> it's an important one nonetheless. Where is he bringing us yeah, on this? Yeah. This is like the, the lottery. You might get hit by yeah, a bus. If all three of them this got hit by a bus is going tomorrow. Fantastic. The lottery version isn't really working. Right <laughs> probably still be around. Oh, oh gosh. But what I want to do is I'm in a coaching group right now, and they're doing an amazing job just giving us transformational content but the three things he say he says that uh, we can develop in and he prays we would de- develop in is number one influence impact and income those mm. three areas influence mm. that you would be known uh, not so that you can be known for yourself but that you can make Jesus known number one mm-hmm. your impact that your works your hands your labor produces good fruit in mm. people's lives and then also your income you want your resources to develop and to grow 
And we did a previous podcast on an episode like this called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Of course, based on the top seller book, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. But we want to do a little off topic and kind of the opposite of that today. And so the title of this episode, you've obviously read it, is this, How to Lose Friends and Infuriate People. Mm -hmm. That's good. I love the concept. Mm -hmm. I love the idea because we're going to go the opposite direction. And if you're taking notes, write this thought down. Here's the main topic, and we have five characteristics and five key traits that I want to debrief all together. Um, Influence takes years to build, but seconds to destroy. Mm -hmm. It takes years to build, but seconds to destroy. And listen to me, you have influence. You have influence, whether it's with your little brother, Mm -hmm. your little sister, students that you have, if you're a coach, if you're a teacher, if you're a parent, your sons, your daughters, you have influence. And if you don't steward your influence well, you're going to lose it. Any key thoughts Mm -hmm. off the bat before we get into the five traits on influence? Absolutely not, clearly. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Influence takes years to build, seconds to destroy. Thank and we just lost all of it. Thank you guys so much for coming <laughs> into our podcast. All these great leaders yeah, to my left. Um, so Witt leads CY. Uh, Justin mentors and leads people all the time. Uh, he helped build Five Weight Ministry. All three of these guys have helped build the Five Weight Ministry. And girl, I should say, guys all together. Um, but can you guys give a couple key thoughts? Tell me, remember what you said about uh, your fruit grows on other people? Why don't you give that thought? Yeah, so the concept, I was in prayer and I felt God was speaking to me about, I was reading about um, they'll be known by their fruit. Hmm. And as a leader and as people who influences, as a person who influences others, I I felt like God was telling me that my fruit grows on other trees. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that my fruit will be known by the things that I do, but really my fruit will be coming from those people that I influence and develop and grow. Mm -hmm. Speak to the people on the opposite side of the camera that are listening, whether in their car, at the gym, you're just listening at home or at school. Tell them about that you see a leader in them. You know, we we, we develop leaders all the time here. Um, Speak to them a little bit. What what kind of things are disqualifying them in their head? What did you guys think? Speak to that a little bit. So when I um, started on staff here, I think probably one of the biggest shifts that immediately my heart made was my job here is not even necessarily to showboat my own strengths but my job really is to create a path for other people to do that for themselves and i think um the one of the very first book i read when i got this job i think maybe this was your recommendation was john maxwell 21 irrefutable laws of leadership Mm -hmm. you all should read that it's like required reading i think for anyone who's leading a team. Um, And he talks about the law of the lid being like the Mm. leader will be the lid to every single ministry. Mm -hmm. So good. good. And I think, you know, a lot of us have seen leadership um, have been, have been under prideful leaders, leaders that we maybe couldn't trust. And we've Mm -hmm. seen this term of leadership maybe be hesitant about it because you've seen people not handle that super well. And I think for me, this concept of I'm going to be in charge of people is really enticing. Right. And then, I, something that I had to really come to terms with was learning how to take care of people and lead people really well is actually an act of humility because mm-hmm. you have to be able to step back and realize what God wants to accomplish. I'm actually going to stop that from happening if it's all about me. So mm-hmm. your skills will get you only so far, um, but learning how to multiply yourself and learning how to create a way for the people behind you Um, to do what God has asked them to do is actually such a humble approach Mm -hmm. to building the kingdom. Um, It's like leadership, true leadership is actually all about humility, not about pride. Mm -hmm. Um, Realizing, oh, this thing, if it's all about me, it's probably going to (laughs) suck. Or it's it's not going to come to the fruition of what God wants it to. So um, that was a big thing for me. When I first came on staff, like three months in, Devin actually told me, um, he pulled me off the stage and he was like, what, you are not allowed to (laughs) preach at CY or step on the stage for three months. And I cried didn't love it <laughs> it was our first didn't love it that's I <laughs> cried. oh my god you, yeah. if you want to see a demon <laughs> oh my gosh that's not true but but it was honestly brilliant because it she showed, was like how am i gonna lead if i don't have stage and hmm. that's not to knock you i just genuinely think a lot of people think the only way you can lead is through pastoring from a pulpit hmm. and i said mm-hmm. you're gonna be a better leader than you are a preacher and i think she's an excellent communicator excellent preacher but she learned how to lead behind the scenes and CY is developing leaders everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the goal. The mm-hmm. goal is not to, I remember God told me this a couple years ago. 
my best sermons will not be from my mouth. They will be from my ministry. My sermons are my people. That's good. And mm. seeing some of these people, and I'm not taking all the credit for them. I definitely feel like I've contributed some to, mm. to you guys. A lot. You can definitely take some, some credit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, but yes. I, the thing I'm most proud about of our church is the people within it. And people that grow, their mindsets, their influence, impact, and income have all grown. And uh, I'm so proud of that. And I want to teach kind of some key principles or key thoughts, really traits today. Of, and just some questions we can ask of, are you this way? Can you grow an influence or are you losing your influence? And here's, here's what I'm going to do. Here's the first one. Remember, influence takes years to build, seconds to destroy. I want you to write these five questions down. Number one is this. Are you likable? Hmm. Are you likable? Likeability is just the simple ability to just have people enjoy your presence, enjoy mm-hmm. your conversations. Uh, we all know the people that as soon as they start talking, they lose their audience. Yep. I hope you are not one of those people. Let's talk about what are some things in likability? Like, what are you looking for? What makes somebody likable? I know mm. it's kind of a simple question, but this to me is all about influence. Yeah. What makes somebody likable? Well, I know how, like, unlikable is taking over conversations. Mm. You know, That's I, good. I, I'm sure we know all these kinds of people that, and this was actually something for myself, um, and I think it's good to um, introspect and to look at yourself and um, through EQ being able to self-identify areas of, of concern and issues. And yeah. one thing that I noticed I was doing a lot and I see a lot of other people doing is you take over conversations because you feel like you need to, um, you need to share a story to, um, validate yourself. to validate yourself or, yeah. um, y- someone shares something and then you also have to say that also helped happen to me and it happened to me in this way. And so yeah, you like one up their the story up guy, every single yeah, the worst time. Mm-hmm. And, and I didn't even notice I was doing it, but I started to notice like when I would speak, everybody would kind of turn off hmm. and like just move away hmm. or they would turn around or they would move off to something else. And I'm like, why is that? And it's most likely because I always have to share how something happened to me mm-hmm. that was worse than you mm. or yeah. better than you. Mm. I can, I can relate to that, especially in my profession, I'm literally going house to house and in sales, which is literally everything we're talking about is like influence, how to get people to not only like you, but want to buy something from you. Mm-hmm. So from like a, bris- a business context, it's, it's very, very important to your point to be likable. It's mm-hmm. like when you walk into a home, my, my thought process is um, how can I help them like, how can I ask them questions about them and not have to, to your mm-hmm. point on the back end, like make it, make it more about me on right. the back end. It's like, if I can, if I can get to a place where I am so interested in the other person where they feel validated, mm-hmm. loved, confirmed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then to the back end of that, like from a business context, then they're persuaded, not because of I'm so good and this and that, and this is like the best part about me and this is who I am. I feel like a place of insecurity is like, look at me, look at me, look at me. But when you so can good. come from mm-hmm. a different place of security and you're just like, listen, I love you. I want to do business with you or I want to do ministry with you or I want to help you to get better. But there's this, to your point, a lot of the influence or having people like you is you take a more humble approach. Mm-hmm. You're interested in the other person genuinely, not genuinely, not to yeah. not to manipulate. Totally. But I feel like that could really build influence. Totally. Mm-hmm. I feel like as you were talking, the phrase that came in my head is the, the best leaders are the ones that don't make you look good, but they make others look great. Yeah. They, they pull the greatness yeah. out of you. I think that's what a mentor does. I think that's what a great leader does is they see a gift on the inside of somebody and they pull it right out of them. Mm-hmm. I think those, you those do the that. Best leaders. Yeah. I think you do that better sure. than anyone I've ever met. Like you did that for, for me. I didn't think I could do really anything in the church, like just understanding what my past was and being mm-hmm. able to pull that out. And I'm a completely different person than I was before. But you can do that with with everyone that walks through the Absolutely. doors of the 508 or, or Connect Church, you it's it's incredible to me how you can see that in other people and you speak that into their lives and that's what they become. Thank yeah. you. It's like there's a couple people that, and I was actually joking with this one person, that you had told me that they are going to be an incredible leader and I just laughed at you. I'm like, there's <laughs> no way this person, I think you know who I'm talking about. Like they're... It was me. I was about to say, look at, uh, look at Whitney. <laughs> no, they have been on this podcast. I'll throw that out there. Ooh. But um, now they're one of the best leaders in the 508. Mm. So proud of this person. Mm. And I, at this at the start, never saw it in them. I thought wow. they're not going to stick around. And you're like, no, they're going to be one of the best people in this, in this mm. ministry. I, and they are. I feel like that's what God does too. Like I remember when I first got saved 
and trying to learn theology, trying to learn the Bible, not feeling good enough, trying to lead people. And I never felt like in a church context based upon how I grew up, like that I was good enough to lead. Mm -hmm. Like I always felt that in the back of my mind, I'm like, and you might be, maybe you're watching this podcast today and you just started going to church and maybe you're in a good community and it's healthy and you want to lead. Um, and you don't feel, I don't know, like qualified enough. You don't need, you don't need a qualification for you to be good enough to lead in the church. Come on. And I think you have more influence than you think. Yeah. Yep. Um, back to what you were saying about gifting. A lot of times we think influence is just like, I'm gifted and I'm on the stage or like somebody's like a worship leader and it's they're just incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Influence is not charisma. Yeah. The beginning of this year, I was talking to God about influence, specifically podcast stuff, social media stuff. And he kept pointing me back to integrity. Mm. Every time I said influence, he was like, yeah, yeah, but integrity. I talked to your dad. Your dad looked at me and he said, I don't want to hear about your goals. I don't want to hear about what you want to build. I don't want to hear about the business stuff. He's like, what are you building beneath the surface? Mm. He's like, if you can build lower, if you can build this foundation of integrity and character and theology and read the Bible more, it's like, I feel like a lot of us think, I got to be gifted. I got to go up and run and speak and preach and do this and be charismatic and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of people in the church right now that are failing because they didn't do the hard stuff and mm -hmm. put the bricks down and yeah. really mm -hmm. lay some layers mm -hmm. for us to um, be strong. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, another thing with, with likable is people that assume the best. We, mm. you, you, you run into people all yeah, the time that good. they're either, they immediately assume the worst or they're always negative about yeah. the situation. Yeah. Yep. That loses a ton of influence. It does. It's like, is it the pessimistic. Any, pessimistic. Yeah. Anytime anything goes wrong, it's automatically they're just shut down. Yeah. It's it, to, to be likable, you should assume the best in everybody. Absolutely. At all times. And in leadership meetings, just for the record, like I've been in meetings recently, even with some of our team, and it's like immediately it's just like we bring up a person or we're talking about a situation, and it's like, ah, I don't know about this. But then I love what Pastor Devin, Pastor Devin always looks at it differently. He looks mm -hmm. at the potential part of it. He's yeah. like, but what if, right. like, what if it could actually yeah. work out? What if they were good enough? And like, what if we could train them and coach them and do this mm -hmm. and that? Yeah. It's like that part of the likability where it's just the positive, yeah. like, I'm going to see the best yeah. instead of thinking the worst on stuff is, it is very important. I think really simply put to kind of wrap up this whole thing is it's human nature to like people who like us. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be likable, like the people around you and be confident enough and mm -hmm. bold enough to speak that out. Believe in people. Assume the best of them. That's good. Believe in them before other people around them mm -hmm. do. Do the hard relational work to help dig out, yeah. wait, what really is likable about this person? Yeah. What mm. did God put in them? And as people like, we're all charismatic, right? We have a lot of charisma. So I think some people could be intimidated like, oh, I don't know if they like me because mm -hmm. I don't have as much energy as Mike mm -hmm. or I'm not, you know, as funny as Dev. But with people who do have charisma, the opportunity to pull the gems out of people yep. because we like that kind of a conversation, yeah, totally. man, that sets someone on fire. Yeah, totally. And then that person likes you forever because yeah. yeah, totally. you like them. Yeah. You know? She said you were funny, huh? Just Did you like that? that? She's like, not as funny as Dev. I'm working on my influence I saw with Devin. He goes, she goes, <laughs> wow, I just, like you. I, I, really, funny. I heard her saying it I go, <laughs> I literally saw him. He goes, "Oh, I'm funny. I like that." That's it just happened in front of your very eyes. I'm funny. Um, I'm likable. <laughs> so yeah, likability. I I wrote down um, to be honoring, uh, to be humble, mm -hmm. to admit when you're wrong. Like I'm thinking mm. in my head. Honestly, I think the people that are likable can admit when they're wrong. That's they, good. Yes. They can That's apologize. Good. So I gotta apologize. I didn't mean to call you a demon earlier. That's not what I meant. Sorry, you know I forgive you. I forgive you fully. That was Are you gonna cool. apologize to me for saying that you just condemned <laughs> oh, me? Oh, well, also, I need to remember. Oh, no, I, I don't apologize. apologize. <laughs> I also apologize to Mike for calling you chronically single. So I did not mean. Oh, to do that's that. good. That's yeah. good. Wow. Now we're getting we're getting somewhere. That's um, likeable. Wow. If I've yeah, ever yeah, seen likeability yeah, like, in my life. <laughs> <just> <laughs> okay, so number one, are you likable? Number two, are you reliable? Are you oh, reliable? Come on. Yeah. How to lose friends and infuriate people. If you are unreliable mm -hmm. and you say you're going to be somewhere on time. Come on now. <laughs> we'll just let it sit. If you say you're going to be somewhere on time and you're not on time, friend, you lose influence so fast. And when you develop a reputation mm -hmm. for that, you lose so much influence and credibility. And if you can't be trusted with small things, you will not be trusted mm -hmm. with big things. Mm -hmm. You will not. So are you are you reliable? Um, small compromises they erode your influence. Your word is your bond. If you say you're going to be there mm -hmm. at something, that's good. Be there, literally be there. I, mm -hmm. I see so many people where they are literally throwing their influence out the window because when they're asked of something and they don't respond or they're not reliable, really the word is trustworthy. You lose so much credibility. Mm -hmm. You lose so much influence. And if you're late 
send a text. <laughs> yeah. Like that's Something. part, that's part of integrity where it's just yeah. like, I don't know. I feel like we sometimes as leaders, it's so easy to cut the corner or not like over communicating is part of integrity, especially in this place. It's like, if you're on a team, if you're building a church, if you're in the marketplace, it's like, if I'm late to an appointment, I will send a text. I don't, I don't even like that either though. I'm like trying to get to the place now where I'm like, sometimes for me, I can actually be more responsible on the back end, and I wouldn't be as late. I'm like, there's some times where it's honestly my fault. Mm -hmm. So I should stop relying on the text. But some of you don't even text. <laughs> like, let's get to there first. If you're late, send a text to your leader or your boss or somebody that you're meeting with for an appointment. Because reliability, when we're talking about influencing people, mm -hmm. if I want to be in a place of influence and I can't show up on time and I can't send a text and I won't change my behaviors on the back end, it's like, I'm going to have no influence with the people yeah. that I want to influence. 100%. Mm -hmm. You think it's small, but it gets big over it does. time. Small compromises erode your influence. Mm -hmm. I yep. think like, I mean, we do push-ups if you're late. We do push-ups in our culture because yep. it communicates that there's accountability at play. But if you can't be trusted to show up on time, you won't be trusted with a team. You certainly won't be trusted with souls. So the people that have reliability, if you're given a task, do you do it to the nth degree? We have an old podcast on excellence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so go back, watch that podcast because it talks about just doing everything, yep. small things mm -hmm. with complete it's and good. total mm -hmm. excellence. I think it's so healthy. Mm -hmm. yep. Any other final thoughts on this one? Um, I was going to say about time management and task management, you're either not responsible or you're terrible at setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. That's, I think that's the reason people aren't reliable is they're either not responsible with their time or they don't set clear boundaries with tasks and they take on too much. Absolutely. And so yeah. that erodes your influence more than anything else is because you said yes to so much. Now you can't be reliable in everything you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I overheard a really funny conversation the other day between two of our team, and it was someone who's been around for a long time. She's like a pillar in our community, talking to someone brand new. And she goes, step one of joining the Connect Squad, download a calendar app and get good at it. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> and I was like, yeah, true. that is true. Yeah. So that was something that this is an area that's been hard for me, like time management and stuff like that does not come super easily to me. Justin, I think, has dreams about Excel spreadsheets <laughs> and time management. I do not. He sees his but calendar really in his dreams. But I'm really learning a lot because Devin's really helped me in this a lot. Um, but I don't know how I lived on a calendar before, but now it runs my life. So mm -hmm. super practical. If you don't have a calendar, get a Google Calendar. It will literally help you. Yeah. You will watch yep. your influence that's multiply true. without even doing anything. Mm -hmm. Just That's true. Part of that. 100%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are you likable? Are you reliable? Number three, are you vulnerable? Mm. I think you want to lose influence, look like you have it all together all the time. Mm. Yep. Good, and to be honest, for somebody that's a pastor, um, I have to apologize on behalf of pastors. Mm. We are terrible at this. Typically, people think because there is a preacher's pulpit and there's a chasm right here and then there's a pews, people think that we are way higher than we are and scripture, specifically in Acts, speaks about all the time we are human beings. Mm -hmm. We make mistakes. We got the same issues. We got the same flaws. To be honest, I feel like this is an area I have to grow in where I don't feel like I've led vulnerably very often. There was a time where I remember Patience, and she's in this room right now. Patience messages me because my wife and I went ice skating. And um, I am a terrible ice skater. Honestly, maybe TMI split my groin right now. Oh my gosh, it was, was horrible, TMI. horrible, horrible. <laughs> um, but my wife posts this video. I repost it because I'm making fun of myself. And she goes, wow, I really like seeing your weakness. You should show it more often. I don't, I'm like, am I bad at this? Oh my God, I guess I, it literally has been stuck in my head since. So Patience, thank you for the conviction. Um, for the sake of honor, Patience was also the person who was telling somebody else to get their calendar in order. So That's Patience great. is killing She's it. She's killing it. She's a great leader. Um, but I think lead vulnerably. Uh, now, mm -hmm. here's a key distinction because we, we say this a lot is I think you can lead from your scars, be vulnerable with your scars, but don't bleed all over everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's good. Can you guys maybe give a distinction between the two? Um, before that, I oh, think yeah, I think it's good to for the flips the flip side of that is likability is being able to show grace, and I think that's the reason a lot of pastors aren't able to mm. lead vulnerably is because mm. they're put on such a high pedestal yeah. and they're seen as not human and there's no grace shown to your weaknesses. Mm. And yeah. so I think to be a likable person, you need to be able to show grace to other people when they do lead vulnerably. Mm -hmm. I also think like there's such a tension there too because I actually feel like that's a stronghold for a lot of leaders where there's this tension where it's like, I want to maintain influence mm -hmm. but I don't want to appear weak but like even biblically like Paul talks about how when he's weak then he's strong because yeah. there's the power of God that you can see 
we just did a whole series at CY. We did four weeks straight of just vulnerability. No. Yeah. It was just yeah. vulnerability. And I, we were telling stories about ourselves about, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share a testimony actually. So when I was, when I was um, younger, probably five or six years ago, I shared that I had an experience where I was teaching and I was actually talked to you about this too, Dev. I was speaking and my mouth got so dry that I couldn't like, I was literally up on stage, I was speaking and it got so dry, I couldn't speak anymore, which is funny to look back. But I was like, like you literally couldn't vocalize. I, it was like, yeah, it was like literally my so. Death, my cough. <laughs> exactly. My cough. <laughs> Moses. Moses. <laughs> but it was, it got so bad. What there was this stronghold that I started to have, and I shared from the stage at CY. I shared it, which I shared with Devin privately. I'm like, Dev, I'm so ashamed of this. Like, I'm so scared to do this. Like, I walk up on stage. All I can think about is like, I need maybe. What if I need water? Or what if my mouth? And I shared that, and there was, honestly, I don't know if I'm completely free, but I'm close now. <laughs> like, like an instantaneous, like. It was, change. I shared it, and there was something that broke, because I'm like, you know what? I don't know, everyone here knows now, so it's like, if I need to get water, it's fine. You just right. started salivating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, mouth, my mouth just came to life. Yeah. I was like, ah. Oh. <laughs> but I'll share, I'll share. Fuck, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you never share vulnerability. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but what I will say is, um, when you're, I feel like for a lot of leaders, that that stronghold needs to be broken. That thought process where I can't mm -hmm. share because if I'm weak, if you show weakness, they will be able to relate with you. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to a, a pastor in a teaching and he was saying, I will not let you on in my pulpit if you don't throw yourself under the bus first. He's like, if you're just going to be up there and I'm Excellent. great and this and that, and you need yeah. to do this and do that and have high standards and, and you look awesome. Then there's no power of God in that. Come when, on, yeah. when you are vulnerable My and you show sufficient. weakness, yeah, there's a grace that comes over you. Mm -hmm. And if you share what you're ashamed about and stop hiding it, there's freedom there. Yeah. So good, Mike. Something that you say all the time is people will be impressed with your strengths, but they'll connect with your weaknesses. Yeah. And I think we were talking about this the other day. I think maybe I was talking with my, my girl Gabby about it, but just talking from a communicator standpoint, like when I preach a message that I feel like is a 10 out of 10, like it's full of all the alliterations, like the zingy one-liners, like I'm like, yo, this whole thing is tweetable. <laughs> I get a lot of comments after like, yo, Wit, that was so awesome. That was so good. Like yeah. shouting me out, you know, the room's super loud. But when I go up there and I say something like, can I tell you about how I've been disappointed this week and why God's still enough for me in my disappointment and he's still enough for you? The texts I get afterwards are not, oh, that was amazing. But the texts are always, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like, like, wow, like that really helped set me free from something. So good. Because mm -hmm. I think the gospel is when I miss it, God comes through and shines, shines. right? Well, and yeah. our job mm -hmm. as communicators, our jobs as leaders is to help people have access to, to that kind of unconditional love. Come on, and man. if we only show them the moments when the conditions are right, that yeah. God loves us, yeah. when I'm skilled and when I'm winning, that's not displaying unconditional love. That's unconditional right. is when the conditions are not right. Mm -hmm. When I'm disappointed, when I miss it, when I don't set good boundaries, when all of the things, when mm -hmm. I'm unreliable, God's still enough, yeah. man. Yeah. That's a love that people can connect with, and that's a love that your heart craves. Everybody always, the, oh, I wish I was loved when I'm impressive. Yeah. That's normal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody feels that. Mm -hmm. you know? I, feel, I feel like as a communicator, if you stay strong, like if you're just presenting this strength all the time, then the people that you're leading, they will stay, they're going to stay weak. Because if you can't show, Ooh, it's a bomb. If you can't show them that I'm not good enough in this area, and this is what God is working with me on then they're, you, they will never get to that place either. Because you're leading, if you lead them in strength, they're going to be like, ah, oh, man, I'm never going to be like that. Like, right. I can't be like him. And he's, I will be a leader once I'm also strong. Yeah. Which yeah. you'll never get there. Yeah. yeah. So show your weakness. Yeah. Show your weakness. It's very important as leaders in the church to share it. Are you likable? Are you reliable? Are you vulnerable? Here's the fourth one. And we got to close out in a minute. Are you honorable? Mm -hmm. I think this one speaks mm -hmm. so much to your words, speaks so much to your actions. Mm -hmm. Um, but do you build? We, we talked about this a little bit already and touched on it in likability, but do you build other people up or do you just build yourself up? Mm -hmm. I think it's such an important thing. Yeah. Uh, if you want to influence, be more interested in others than yourself. Mm -hmm. I think we have a culture of honor. That was something that we were obviously yeah. uh, dug down hard in and, and built up. Um, but build mm -hmm. other people up. Use your yeah. platforms. Use your influence. Use your voice. Whatever you have 
don't just post about yourself all the time. Yeah. Post other people, highlight other people, share stories from other people. Yep. That's the digital side. In person, I think public honor is always better than private honor, but mm -hmm. I think you should privately honor all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we do this practice after services, after experiences. <laughs> uh, I, I teach it to all the leaders and these guys all do it well. Um, we'll literally hit up like as many people as we think and be like, thank you so much for doing this. This was awesome. You mm -hmm. did such a great job. Today mm -hmm. we honored a story that was at TC and we brought a young man up that faithful servant, mm. faithful leader, and God moved in his life recently. And we just constantly want to share stories yeah. like that because we're an honorable culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like that produces such health, maturity. Does. Yeah, thoughts on that? Yeah. I think something that um, one of the first moments when I moved here that I really felt genuinely connected to you as a leader, this kind of ties into the last one, is when we started talking about how some of our cuts versus jabs culture has mm -hmm. gotten a little out of control. Yes. Um, and you shared very vulnerably about your journey with that. Um, so I think that's a good question. Um, yeah. How do we... So we're obviously funny, right? <laughs> and, well, Devin is funny. <laughs> um, I'm funny, thank you. <laughs> that was a jab. Uh, <laughs> so how does how do you be honorable with people that you're close to, that you like to joke around with them? Hmm. Where's the line for that? What is a cut versus a jab? Um, because healthy healthy culture, you know, you can poke at people, but I think it's something that we've really had to work hard on, <laughs> and not so. always mm -hmm. one. Sometimes we get it wrong. Do you want to share that testimony, Dev? <laughs> Uh, which one? I feel like there's a thousand. I've got it wrong. I don't know which testimony you're talking about. I feel like I'm really weak in this area, to be honest. I feel like you're a lot stronger now. I mean, thank yeah. God. I started from ground zero. So. I mean, Jesus is Lord. Every yeah. time Dev spoke, I was like convicted. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> what te which testimony are you talking about? Um, I don't know. I just, well, I guess I'll just share from my perspective. Like, I just remember, I mean, one of our, our core values at the 508 is honor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I remember, I remember I was driving to an appointment one day and I just remember God like almost showing me in some ways that our words as a leadership team, and it wasn't one person specifically, but our words, we were actually tearing people down. Mm -hmm. And whenever, whenever there's insecurity, it rips down. It's like you try to tear something down, but when you're secure, you'll try to build it back up. Mm -hmm. So for us, we were like, I felt like we learned as a leadership team that there's fun, there's family, and then there's like the jokes and all that stuff. But there's a point where your words are actually ripping somebody down. And if we can get to the place in our word, I feel like this is really where you can kind of get secure in prayer and in the word of God, where you know who you are and you're no longer using your words to rip people down, mm -hmm. then you'll have more influence. Totally. You know what I mean? Like going back to being likable and all that stuff. It's like, if you can build people. I think there's a ratio. I think uh, if you're not building people up three to one, you should just never. Uh, yep. I, I feel like we all, you always have to do deposits. Now, when we say cuts and jabs, cuts are speaking to like identity. Yeah. Speaking to who a person is. A jab is like, wait, you can be such a doofus. Show up on time. You know, like something something dumb Mike's like that. Mike's like, bald head. Yes. Yeah, Mike's bald head. <laughs> but also, the only reason we would... Um, jab at something like that is because Mike gave permission yes. publicly to do so. Mm -hmm. Yes. You should never, ever come mm -hmm. at somebody about a physical thing that they can't do anything about ever, ever. Yeah. And that's really speaking to identity. That's speaking to physical looks, those kind of things. Yes. I mean, you can have fun with your friends. We're not trying to be legalistic about this, but the ratio should be like genuinely three to one. If you're going to uh, ever make fun of somebody, make sure you have three times as much deposits in them mm -hmm. before you take a withdrawal from them. Yeah. I think that just creates an honorable culture. Yeah, it's good. I think we've done a great job course correcting uh, I was very repentant because to be honest I, I was not very good at that I was raised in the basketball world trash talk is I feel like a spiritual gift of mine um, it's a spiritual God. I think it was the first time I ever seen you God. cry Release we're going right back into <laughs> yeah. the okay. first time I ever saw him cry the first time I ever saw him cry it's a it's I, I genuinely was I, I got with the Lord and, and he was like you need to you need to grow in this mm -hmm. and I led our ministry poorly for a long time in that and I was convinced I was going to do it differently and I don't know if it's gotten better, <laughs> but, but I Debbie certainly really feel like you, But <laughs> then, then he gave you a vision that we're going to start building kings and queens. Yeah. So like the exact thing that you had struggled with, you then completely flipped it. And now God is sending from literally all over New England leaders <laughs> mm -hmm. that are being built um, because of the culture. It's like now there is a culture of honor and... I don't know. I feel like I feel like we see it differently. You know, like there's a whole nother grace yeah. on our ministry where people are being built. 
It's you know good. what I mean? We always talk about loving people to life, and that's, yeah. that's what's drawing people to the ministry here. Is, that's From all literally over. what they're getting. They come all in here, everywhere. and they are loved and honored to life. So. 100%. I'm yeah. very grateful. Last one is this. So likable, reliable, um, vulnerable, honorable, and are you coachable? Hmm. Hmm. This one to me is you can always tell somebody that wants to grow, wants to grow in their influence, impact, and income, wants yep. to grow spiritually, if they are willing to receive correction, willing to receive feedback, having coaches. Honestly, what we want to say is thank you to you guys yeah. for allowing us to essentially yeah. be some coaches in yeah. your life to kind of help you. We have so much feedback from the podcast all the time of people saying, these episodes have helped me so much. I actually met two girls today that came to TC for the very first time and they said the reason we were, they were there is because, first of all, Mike shared the podcast. We've been watching it. They have watched tons of the things and they're like, we have to come to this church. I met him today. It was awesome. So awesome. awesome. Thank you for Incredible. allowing us to be your coaches. I think, are you coachable? Mm -hmm. Yep. Do you have coaches in your life that can speak to your blind spots? Because we all have blind spots. We all have areas of growth. Specifically, especially me, I'm telling you, as the leader, you become the lid. I love how Whitney mentioned that earlier. If you're the leader and you're the leader of your household, you're the leader of your job, you're the leader of your family, you are the leader. And if you are the leader, that means you are the lid. And you need coaches to be able to pull the gifts out of you, mm, yeah. but also reveal your blind spots. I'm telling you, if you have coaches in your life, mentors in your life, spiritual fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters that don't enable poor behavior, they develop your poor behavior and they develop your character, you're going to be set and you're going to grow in your influence, impact, and income. And, 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 what is, and what is not coachable is when somebody corrects you and then you give either an excuse or you're super defensive. Yeah. You're like, no, 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 don't, no, no, no. I'm like, well, I'm doing this. And like, I was, I was only late because of this, 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 this. If you're responding like that, that's like yeah. literally the exact opposite yeah. of influence and coachability. And as a leader, if I correct someone and their response is that kind of defensiveness, immediately in my heart, I'm like, I'm only going to have one more conversation with this person. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I, I'm not going to fight with this person again. Yeah. So we're going to relocate them. To I think, team. I think someone who does this very well is Flo. Like, yeah. She reaches out on a weekly basis. She How does, can I do yeah. better? She well, does, tell yeah. tell me something. How can I do better? And then she she her. walks me. She literally this week walked me through her whole plan for the prayer team of TC and just asked me questions throughout the whole. This is what I have, but poke holes in it. Tell me how I can She's do better. Very so yeah. good. Yeah. And you know what's happened? Our influence oh. has skyrocketed. Yeah. yeah. And she's yep. trustworthy. She's, she's doing such it's a incredible. good job. She's doing, she's doing such a good job. So we hope you're listening. We love you. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you were coaching some of our C wires on this. We were talking about honor after service. Um, and you were saying, we're, Pastor Devin spoke at CY, brought a really challenging message to our students, and you said, you know, like, we love honoring Dev, but the best way to honor him is to do what he says. Mm -hmm. The best way to honor him is to take the coaching that you got to mm -hmm. the, today and put that into action yeah. in your life. Yeah. Um, my favorite mentees are ones who take notes while I talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, they're, like, this is, they're actually ready to grow. And... Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, it massively of, increases influence. Because one of the practical things that we do in our ministry is we shout people out, we we love on people, we will build people with our words. But to your point, it was like, I remember sitting there and I was like, I don't know, Pastor Devin was very, very specific on a word that we can actually implement, like confidence. Speaking on confidence, like one, if you want influence, like building that confidence in the word and in prayer and with God. But um, I remember thinking that to myself, I'm like, that is the way, that is the real way to honor mm -hmm. any communicator or any leader in your life or mentor. It's like, if you want to be coachable and then they give you coaching <laughs> and then you don't do it mm -hmm. and then they're giving you a model, they spend your time, um, they literally take you out to lunch, whatever it is. And it's like, and if you're not actually shifting the way that you act, it's like, that is, that is dishonor mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's taking somebody's time and just throwing it away. Absolutely. Um, we hope you got a lot out of this. Uh, are you likable? Are you reliable, vulnerable, honorable, and are you coachable? I think this is a good guide. I hope you took some notes, no matter where you're at. Yeah. I'll repeat them one more time in case you're in the car and you can go back to it. Are you likable? Are you reliable? Are you vulnerable? Are you honorable? Are you coachable? I think this is a great guide to not lose friends and infuriate people, but how to win friends and influence people. That's, mm -hmm. that's where we can grow, and that's our hope and desire Amen. for you. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the podcast. You know how it goes. As the story goes, listen, we don't fear the future. We pioneer. God bless you guys. Thanks Love so much.